G'day everyone, welcome back to my little home workshop, my name's Aaron. So today I'm doing a little job for my buddy Wayne. Now you may remember Wayne from a few previous videos where I did all those BSW bolts. Now Wayne is a vintage engine guy and today he's dropped me off a, a box full of castings that I need to machine but today I'm concentrating on this rocker arm. Now this old rocker arm is from a 1905 Hornsby oil engine. Now it's over a hundred year old this rocker arm. Now Wayne has 3D scanned that. Uh, he bought himself a laser scanner and taught himself how to re um, reverse engineer. So once you scan that, it's a surface model, then you've got to convert it into a solid model. Uh, I believe he then has them 3D printed and then gets them cast um, in a foundry. I think the foundry is up in Castle, Maine, but don't quote me on that, or Ballarat or somewhere up there. Now, it's every time you touch it, it's, it's just dirty as so. This is Wayne's one that he's dropped me off here today, and I've finished it. I've been in the workshop quite a few hours doing this. Um, this was a bored hole, so I had to drill and bore that. I had to put an oil hole in here. I had to find the measurements here to put the exhaust valve uh, tappet adjuster. And of course, there was a couple of critical measurements. So. One of the critical measurements was this distance here. It had to match the old one. And of course, this distance here. Now, I got a little bit caught out at the end because when I look at this, I think this may have been dropped and this has got a little bit of a bend on it. I'm pretty sure they would have drilled that when they drilled that back in the day. So, these holes here, so just to give you a rundown, that's a 5.8 bore, 5.8 of an inch. Uh, over here was half an inch. So this is pinned and this pinned is pinned over to keep in. Uh, this is the 3.8 UNC tap, so I, thread, sorry, so I had to drill and tap that. Alright, well let's get in it, let's have a look at the video and uh, follow along and I won't voice over this one, I'll talk through the video. I've got you over here at the milling machine and the first operation of the day is I want to put a little flat on this side and the opposite side so I can hold it in the vise over here and that way then I can come in bore this hole. So let's get at it. Now this cutter is from Tom over at Hilltop. Thanks Tom. I don't know how sharp it is but we'll give it a go mate. I'll flip the part up the other way. Um, really hard with casts to try and get some sort of datum and that sort of stuff, especially with rough cast. Now Wayne did scan this arm, this rocker arm, it's an exhaust rocker arm, and he scanned it, 3D scanned it, and then 3D printed it and had it made in a foundry. Um, I've just got my level here, just trying to see if I am roughly or relatively square, and I think I am. So let's buzz this other side off here now, just to get some 0.6 of a mil. Right, I'll leave that there. What I'll do now, I'll stand the part up the correct way and um, come back at it and have a look. So what I need to do now is to mill a flat on top of this surface here. Um, it's really hard to get a level or, or a datum point here so I'm sort of going in a little bit blind. I've a bit of work holding over here. I've got all this chopped up and held down and that will stop the arm moving hopefully. So let's have a crack at it.
I've brought you over to this side of the milling table. I've put the old arm here, the old exhaust valve arm, and I've bolted it down onto a flat surface. I'm just trying to work out where this needs to be. So after a bit of jigging around, I had to actually angle this and take another cut to get this face first, and then to readdress that face, which I'd done off camera. So I'm going to leave that alone now. All right, because roughly here we're at the same height. Okay, now bear in mind, like I said, this is a scan copy, a digital scan copy of this, and uh, Wayne's done very well to reverse engineer this part. And it's not look, it's not a hundred percent accurate. I'd say it's close to ninety nine though, without a doubt. So a little bit more mucking around to get this to where I need it. Uh, this height here needs to be an inch and three quarters, so I think that's 44.4 mil roughly. So what I might do now is reduce this down and, um, and then I'll set it up to bore. I've decided to deviate from what I last said about um, facing these down to an inch and three quarters. I thought, while I've got that extra meat on the bottom, I may as well drill the hole now and um, get that out of the way and bore it and that way then I don't have to worry about it on the other side. Once again I've still got the work holding set up over here so that should be nice and level now. Put a half inch drill bit in here now and I'm going to send it down. I'm going to be using the hand feed mechanism on the quill here so the um, as you rotate you've got a better control of it. This is a half inch drill bit that I'm sending it through. Just a high speed steel Sutton tools drill bit. That's 40 millimeters deep. And I'll send the tip down to 50 and hopefully I'm not cutting into my parallel on the bottom. I should just about to break through the bottom of that now, so I'll back it off. Righto. Bit of a courtesy flush. Now with cast I like to vacuum as I go, it just keeps that dust down and tries to keep trying to keep it out of my nose. I've got the boring bar set up in the milling machine and uh, I'm going to be using the hand feed le uh, lever here, the wheel, hand feed wheel, and um, send it. I'm roughly taking a rough cut and had a look at it and moved it back to my zero. I'm about 9 sixteenths of an inch. Now off camera I've whittled away at this hole and um, I've got it very close. It's supposed to be 5 eighths of an inch, which is 15.88 of a millimetre. I'm currently at 15.8, so I'm just going to take a lick down here to bring it up to 5 eight. I've finished the boring operation, um, it's uh, pretty close on size there, when I bottomed out 
yeah, it sort of bit a little bit and probably took me out 0.03, 30 micron out, but look, it's uh, it's not, I'm not too worried about that. So what I need to do now is reduce this by about four millimeters. So I'll take a one, do this in one mil cuts. I right, know, let's send it. Should be the final cut. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing here. So in this setup, I've put the old arm in here and I've used the pivot pin that it came with and I indicated off this back face, which is the inside face of that fixed jaw and set my Y zero. I then indicated the pin and found the halfway point. Moving the X, the X and Y axes around, I found the location of that hole, okay? And I've also got the height of that hole in my digital readout. I'll bring it over to show you the digital readout. So from that location I know exactly where the hole is in relation to that back face and where that 38 UNC hole has to go. That's an 8mm dowel pin by the way. Well here's the setup. I've got the arm in the vise. I've got it held up the back side there. And on the front side I'm using an angle plate and this parallel clamp. Now this is from Doug Gray, if you remember. I did this build oh, pretty, probably a year and a half, two years ago actually, these parallel clamps. So good opportunity to use it. Okay, so let's drop down. I've still got two more millimetres to take off here to get to my height. Now I thought this would be a good opportunity, uh, Tom gave me this cutter as long as the other one. I've just chucked it in here now and I'm just going to take a little lick and get a nicer radius here. Just a little clean up pass, it was a little bit ugly with the other cutter. So I'll come in here. And that's uh, looking much better. Right, I've re-indicated this and uh, found out where that hole needs to go. Luckily I took a photo previously of my digital readout and uh, I've got those exact coordinates. So let's drop in with this spot drill. I've got an 8mm drill bit in there to tap this um, 3 8 of an inch UNC. So it's 8mm. Now what I like doing here, I start it in low speed, feed it, turn it off and then do it by hand. However, the other day when I was doing the cylinders, you wouldn't believe it, I made four of them. The last hole, what do you reckon happened? Sausage fingers, hit the wrong switch and broke the tap off. That's better. Right, so off camera there, I fed that tap through by hand. I've just put Tom's tap in just to clean up. It's uh, look fairly new up there. Those top threads hadn't been used, so we've got a nice thread in there. So now it's off to the other side. What I need to do now is put an oil hole here, a lubricating hole in this old arm. You can see it here. Now, when Wayne has 3D scanned that, uh, he's actually picked that up in the in the scan. So. That's made my job a bit easier. And being it only an oil hole, I'm not going to worry about, you know, how 
precise it's going to be. Um, I've got the dimple there, so I'm just going to drill it right there. Let's drill this quarter inch. Broken through. I'm up to the last uh, piece of the puzzle here now. I'm on the uh, very far end. Once again, got it held in the vise. I've got it packed up with a crap load of shims and spaces. Then I've worked out the distance. So I indicated this hole and then moved across to the distance that I need to be. So I'll face this up. So when Wayne had this cast, he had a couple of mil up on every face. So I'll knock a bit off this. Taking a mil at a time. Look at that, I thought I was a CNC machine then for a moment. Now I might get a bit of chatter here, so I'll just take it easy. What you're hearing is a bit of chatter because this overhang here, I'll clean that face up. Um, once again, I've indicated across to the right position here, roughly center of the hole there, and uh, this needs to be half inch. So we'll spot drill it. One arm completed. Well there we have it ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was something a little bit different. Uh, I'm not sure if a lot of people like milling videos, but it's uh, it's one of those things, so let's just see how it goes. I'm trying to regularly post now every Friday at 3 p.m. in uh, that's um, Melbourne time. But anyway, once again, I appreciate you following along and uh, thank you and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.